Hello and welcome back to MLB The Show 19 and the Jason Parm Road to the Show. I'm Tyron Saber. Last time out, Jason faced off against the Milwaukee Brewers in their house and walked away with a complete game shutout victory and 101 pitches, just too shy of a Maddox. But he collected four strike or, or uh, collected ten hits, allowed only four hits. I think I screwed that up. Ten strikeouts, allowed only four hits, and uh, got himself a well-deserved win. So let's keep going. Running out of year here rather quickly. Got a bullpen day. What can we do? Uh, work on our curveball control, I guess. As I said last time, Jason's, um, what's it called? The, uh, oh, words. The walks per nine based on balls per nine rating is just about capped. Um, why don't we work on our hits per nine cap now? What's your challenge? Allow fewer than five hits over your next appearance. Woo! We'll give it a try. Jason's been pretty good on that regard. Got a clubhouse day. Uh, Jorge Soler. Sure, let's make a bro out of him. Lock down the win today. These divisional games can be the big difference maker at the end of the year. Now we're bro status with Jorge. And getting very close to that level four captain uh, personality. And that should bring us out here against the New York Mets in Citizens Bank Park. Now, Jason has faced off against his old team 11 times before, has a 7 0 record against them, a 1.70 ERA, and a 304 Woba. So, pretty good numbers. I'd like to see that Woba come down, but I'm not going to complain too much because when I start complaining, that's when things go bad for me, so we're just going to take it as it comes when we get out here and get it. Time for baseball on the show from the bank. Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. Today, we've got a contest out of the National League East between the New York Mets and the Philadelphia Phillies. It's going to be a premier pitching matchup. Two of the league's hardest throwers go head-to-head -head next. Jason Parham, a right-hander from the Keystone State, gets the ball as the starter in this one. Dan Plezak, what do you got? This guy's having a real solid season up to this point. And I know he'd like to get one more notch in his belt to get to that 200 Ks on the season. He's awfully close, so you'd have to think in the back of his mind he'd like to punch out a few here and get into that 200 K club for the, for the year. Digging in the at right the plate is Travis Jankowski. Travis. He will Jankowski. lead this one off today. Bright afternoon in Philadelphia. Great day for some baseball. Let's get it. First, pitch of the first up to the plate for way. the Mets. Travis Jankowski and fouls off a fastball off. for the first pitch of the game at 1.36 in the afternoon. And we are underway. 27 career plate appearances for Jankowski. He's in the neighborhood of about 650 OPS, I would say. 656 OPS with a 284 Woba. Pretty good numbers as they go against Jason, considering uh, the numbers that he holds some other players down to. But again, Jankowski's had a long career to accumulate those numbers against Jason, so... Hopefully. Swing and a miss. It's going to be strike three called against Jankowski. Three pitches. Strikeout. Meet the Mets. Who's the one to watch, Dan? Well, I'll keep an eye on the leadoff guy and see what he can do in this one. He's already snatched 20 bags this year. When you think about it, there are not a lot of guys stealing 20 bases anymore. So that's already a big year in terms of stealing bases. And he's not even done yet. And while we're on the subject, uh, Jason is sitting over 200 innings pitched this year, and we're not even into September yet, so we got the potential for a very good year in terms of innings pitched for Jay. Slider to the outside, misses for ball one. In this one behind the plate is Joe McDonald. You know, you got to take your time and feel Joe McDonald out behind the dish a little bit. He has a fastball flared into right field, but easily playable, and that is going to be the second out. Chet Ellis with his mighty uh, rolly fingers mustache showing us that handlebars aren't just for bicycles anymore. 
first offering. I'm glad to see that Sassy has branched out into a mustache care line. Fly ball, center field, and that is going to be the end of the inning. Down in order go the Mets. So one strikeout and a couple fly balls to the outfield, and that is going to bring the Phillies bats up to the plate. Let's see what they can do. And bottom one, Phillies go up one nothing. So Jason's got the advantage going here into the top of the second. Let's go. Here comes the first pitch. Change up right on the outside corner, and that is strike one called. Good pitching are in for a treat today. What can we expect from today's matchup, guys? Another fastball up and in to seam to the right-handed batter. He swings and can't hold up on a fastball above the zone. That's strike two. At the top of their game. Call is for a fastball on the inside, off the off the plate. So we'll see what we can do. Swung on and missed, blew it right through him, and that is going to be the second strike out of the day for Jason, and the first out of the inning. And guys, the thing I want you to so we got Felipe Velasquez, Adrian Sanchez, Victor Gutierrez, and Michael Franco on the infield. Like Outfield of Steven Sinotsky and Soler. Chancisco right putting down signs behind home plate and on the bump, so as usual, Mr. Jason Parham. And now we got El Mago, Javier Baez, former Chicago Cub, uh, cover athlete for the 2020 edition of MLB The Show. First pitch coming, here it is. Kind of a unusual choice considering that he didn't really have a standout year last year, but they gotta get somebody on the cover, I guess. You would ask me, it'd be a good choice to put a pitcher on there like, say, Jacob deGrom or uh, Steven Strasburg or Max Scherzer or Garrett Cole or somebody. And they'll just think, well, this pitcher's going to go back on the outside. But when you double up like he did right there, it sends a message to the hitter that you're not afraid to throw in that inner. Swung on and missed way out in front of that fastball there, and that's strike two called. Calls for a curveball to the outside corner. Guess we'll deliver. And Swung on and missed. Second strikeout of the inning, third of the day. And, really and that's going to be two outs the here in the series. second. That's his fifth strikeout in this series alone. So Chance Sisko with an inspired call there with the curveball. Below the zone, and he went fishing for it. Cal Farmer looking pretty good today as far as the league goes. He comes into today with 11 plate appearances against Jason. He has a 364 batting average. Good for a 1273 OPS and a 519 WOBA. Very, very good numbers. But, you know, Jason's been hot ish and. Doesn't matter. That's good for a double over there. Out to left center field. Kyle Farmer going to knock himself a big one-out double. Or two-out double, I should say. Nice liner out to left center field. Bringing up everybody's favorite flamingo stance batter. Friggin' uh, J.J. Harrell here. Let's see what he can do with a runner in scoring position and two gone. Delivery to him on the way. That Fastball outside, right. corner for strike. strike one. Runners in scoring position this season. Harold hits in the 240s, so there's room for improvement in that regard. He beat a first attack. Change up. Oof. Good one to hit, but it's but left hanging there. 0 2. And he has to because he wouldn't be here otherwise. Cutter up and in. Fouled off. Fouls that one off as well, but he's early on it. So the call now is for a curveball. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the corner and hope that he can't make anything happen with it. Strike three called. Can't pull the trigger. Have a seat and get comfortable, and that is going to end the inning. We're back with more on a Sunday afternoon following this.
set to get his day started. Emil Escobar. And it's been a real struggle for him with the bat so far this year. Okay, so. around in a hurry. What was his name, Jackie? No, Emil Escobar. That's right. Ready to That's right. I know Here's who's at the plate. Pitch. Promise. Yeah. Fastball in. down. Taken. Strike one. Give him another fastball this time up and in. And Taken. The the Top of the zone. Right Maybe a bit of a generous down. call there. That's 0-2. Right on the corner, and that is strikeout number five on the day for Jason. First out of the inning. Jason closing in on that 200K mark for the year. He needs another four to get to that 200 mark, and he may well do it today if he keeps pitching like this. Jackie Ortega, the opposing pitcher, comes to the plate. Here comes the first pitch. Career one, what is that? Not 125. Eight career plate appearances against Jason. He's got a career 143 batting average, good for a 393 OPS and a 196 Wobbuck. So he does have hits against Jason. Cutter up, misses, that's ball one. Try a fastball up in the zone. Nope. That one misses as well. That's 2 1. Curveball there, bottom part of the zone, we hope. Fouls it off. And we'll go ahead with the slider. Put it low outside. And of course, not much you can do with that one. Swing and a miss, and that is going to be strikeout number six on the day. And two out here in the top of the third. Double digit K's. And it looks like he could finish up in that range again here. He's really an exciting pitcher to watch when he's sending guys packing like this. Hey now, we've got two. Now into the box now. Travis Jankowski. Travis. Travis Jankowski lays down a bunt, but it's not going to do him much good. That one rolls foul. First two men in the inning have both gone down via the punch out, so we'll see if he can fare any better. That's a grounder down the third base line, but that one is going to roll foul. We're going to go curveball below the zone. And he manages to stay alive on that one. Bases are empty here with two men out. Here's another one, same spot. Pulls it. First baseman's got it. And he'll step on the bag himself. Velasquez has it, and that's going to end the inning. One, two, three. They're down one nothing. We're back as the Phillies lineup readies for their third turn with the bats. And unfortunately for them, this club has had its issues on offense. At the start of the day, they have the worst team batting average in the league. And when I talked with one member of the coaching staff, he told me there's really no good excuse or explanation for it. Even though batting average isn't the end-all be-all of offensive stats, he said there's no denying they have to figure out how to be more competitive with their at-bats. Back to you, Matt. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Yeah, all right, Jason up with the bat to lead off the inning, bottom three. Late on that one, or early on that one, actually, out in front of that ball. That's yeah, just a little chopper over there to short. They have no trouble putting Jason out on that one, and that'll be one away. Bring it up, Brian Quinones again. He flew out in his last at Some of the fewest plate appearances here on this Mets team. A bunch of these guys have more than 10, 20, uh, 30 plate appearances against Jason, whereas uh, Quinones has eight, including this one. And Emil Escobar has four, counting the last one he had. 
But that one's going to come up clutch here. He's going to get himself a base hit to lead off the bot top of the fourth. And that is going to put him in, in uh, onto first base with nobody out. He's only given up two hits so far today, so he's been hitting his spots all game long. Remains to be seen if he can keep this. Fastball. Chet Ellis can't pull the trigger on it quite in time, and that is strike one. Stands in as he checks his swing here for strike one. Fouls that one off. And this will up a foul ball. Give him a changeup down and away. Bounces that down the first base line to stay alive. Go back to New York, man. The next 0 2. Cutter up and in gets fouled off. Both teams with just two hits apiece thus far. Still Goes no reaching for that fastball and fouls it off, so he's doing his job. Right now. Keep frustrating that pitcher. Foul 12 of these things off. He's going to miss over the heart of the plate at some point. And that is a fair ball, actually. That's going to be a grounder down the third base line, and it stays fair, so Ellis gets on base. It's now three base hits for Jason so far. We can only allow five before we fail our cap challenge. So now we're in a little bit of trouble. Twitches at that fastball. Ruben Street does. It's right-handed pitching very well. Makes a lot of contact, but he generally isn't known for displaying a lot of power. You'll see a lot of line drives and ground balls from him in these situations. Little bloop over there to Michael Franco at third, and that'll be the first out, so... Maybe just attacks that pitch that's not there to do major Got him to pop that one up. But could just drive it up the middle the other way and take his knock, and that's what he's been able to do. And Javier Baez coming up with a runner in scoring position and one out. Really would like a double play here. Hmm. Dubious call there, but... Umpires are going to miss a couple calls. It's the pitcher's ability to stay composed and grind that's going to make him successful today. Another fastball. This one's a strike. No question on that one. 1-1 one, one count. Two balls and a Holds off on the curveball below the zone. That's a 2-1 count. Here as a hitter to be aggressive. You can pretty much count on a pitcher. He's trying to get back in the strike zone. And with two guys on base right Goes reaching, but holds up. It's a 3-1 count now. Cutter, top of the zone. Taken, strike two. And that was kind of a questionable call again. But we got the benefit of the doubt on that one. And... I think now it's time for the Showtime slider down and away. And hope that we get a favorable call on it. Swung on and missed. Strikeout number two for Javier Baez. Seven on the day for Jason, and that is out number two of the inning. He's just been completely lost at the plate, flailing all over the place. Now that's his sixth strikeout of the series. They really got him figured out. Kyle Farmer takes strike one, a fastball at 96, top of the zone. Cutter down is the next call from Chance Sisko. Late on a cutter down in the zone. That's 0-2. Let's see the approach right here. I'd like to see him shorten up a little bit. Maybe swung on and hit pretty well. Clobbers a, a curveball out there to the track, and that is going to be a base hit. Nice double with two runs scoring on the play. Kyle Farmer driving in in the clutch. Wow, what a great piece of hitting here as he took a big swing at that one. Almost got it out of here for a three-run blast, but he'll be happy with a two-run double as well. Yeah, he's not happy either way, but I'm sure the man on the mound is more than a bit relieved that that hit didn't turn into something worse. Now about it. The well, it's bad enough as far as I'm concerned. Change up down, call the ball. Another one, fastball inside taken, ball two. Jason got to be getting a little frustrated here. Well, he's got a base open to use right here, and it looks like he might not be Another fastball inside. 3-0 count. Farmer stands at second with two gone. 
Change up to the outside corner. That's taken for a strike. Interesting if he comes in the zone aggressively again here with the base open. He doesn't have to. The three and one pitch. And this is down. He's but called a strike. Wow, it's three and two now. Ump is all over the place today. We're going to go fastball up and in to seam. I don't like that spot all that much. Swung on and missed, though. Second strikeout of the day for J.J. Harrell, and Jason gives up the lead, unfortunately, on that Kyle Farmer double. So, that is going to be end of the inning, bringing the Phillies back up with the bats. Here's hoping they can make up some ground. Not in the bottom of the fourth, unfortunately. Anil Escobar coming back up to the plate. First pitch coming, here it is. Slider bottom of the zone taken, strike one. So earlier in the broadcast, we mentioned that we might be seeing a pitcher's duel today, and these two guys have certainly delivered on that promise. Nope. Yeah, Starts man, reaching for that curve ball below the zone, taken though for ball one. Power arms, establishing the fastball and then using their off speed to get these guys and keep them honest. Fouls off the fastball below the zone there. That'll bring it to one and two. And now Cisco calling for a slider outside. Runs going to be at a premium. Both these guys look super locked in. See what we can do with it. Well, that's about where he wanted it, and it was about as much of a waste pitch as I was afraid it would be. Fastball down gets knocked into shallow right field. So that is going to be hit number five on the day. Jason can't allow any more if he wants that hit cap to be buffed up. The pitcher on. He's going to try to sack bunt his way on. That's going to roll foul. Showing bunt, but he winds up taking ball one. Pulls back on that one. Step number one and getting a sacrifice bunt down. Make sure. Lays down a bunt. First baseman's got it. And that was a dubious call by Velasquez, and that's going to be. Yep, that's a dubious call, and he's not going to get the out at second or at first on that one. So that's going to bring Travis Jankowski back up. Fastball taken right down the pipe at 96 for strike one. Fastball below the zone now taken, ball one. Fastball again, up in the zone, 96, strike two. Take no chances with this one, change up down and away. Swung on and missed, that's strikeout number nine on the day. And that'll be 200 strikeouts for Jason on the year. Strikeout number 200 for him on the year, as he has been very difficult to solve this season. Riding in once again, Brian Quinones. He singled in two trips to the. I'm sure Jason would be feeling a lot better about that if he had not, not given up that big double last inning. And a good save. And a bad. I'm not very impressed with Velasquez right now. I gotta say. I mean, Gutierrez, I guess, was to blame for that one, but. That was not, that was an unnecessary, uh, that was an unnecessary base we gave up there. Into the box now, Chet Ellis. What, something that could have been a double play is instead just a fielder's, a fielder's choice with an error. Now Slider inside gets Chet Ellis swinging on it, and that's strike one. And it's one and one. Looking to keep this a one-run game. The pitch. That's grounded it's over to there to short. You want to screw this one up, too? No, apparently not. You're going to get out of it scoreless. Left for the Mets. 
if they're unable to add to their two to one. But lead. not what you want to see. No wind on the day. It's just a hot, still August afternoon. Jason He's one thus far. Well, hate to say it, but we're just going to do it. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. And they'll indeed have the pitcher squaring around as he puts this one down. Just going to put the down the bunt, get the runner in scoring nice position. Don't be too proud about it. And it all Next goes for nothing. So there you go. First pitch coming, here it is. Cutter up above the zone this time for ball one. Give him a change up down for the 1-1 one, one pitch. That pulls it foul. Late on that one. Now the calls for a fastball inside. Fouls that one off. I don't know how he got the bat to that one. Now slider to the outside. Floater, really, but I don't blame the pitcher one bit for trying to get the chase right there. He's been fouling everything off. He's still got the entire arsenal open to him, so we'll see what pitch next. Two, two pitches. A little bloop there into foul ground. Oop, that was not intentional. That one softly hit over to first base, three unassisted, and he's out for number one. In. Javier, Javier Baez, Baez back up. We've made him comfortable twice today. Let's go for number three. Fastball up 98. Pound in the zone, Jason is. Or does he try and get him fishing on something bouncing in the dirt? We're going to go curveball on this one. Did a good job to shorten up and protect the plate. Yeah, Managed to make contact on that one somehow. Hey, look at one pitch right here. Come on, Into the wind now up. Fastball here up and in. Balls up, balls up. Pops it straight up. Chance Cisco's got it. He hauls it in Second out of the inning. Bringing up Kyle Farmer left. again, who can do, who has done no wrong today. Two for two Ready with now. two doubles. He's got a couple of doubles thus far, so we'll see if he can keep it up. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Fastball up, taken, strike one. Give him a change up down now. Taken, strike two. And we're going to go fastball down, apparently. I try not to shake off my catcher. Whenever I can. Nice catch by Velasquez. That goes some way to make up his former indiscretions. And that's going to end the inning. Down in order go the Mets. They lead it two to one. It's not exactly a perfect rendition of Ashburn Alley, but we'll take it. Jason up. Now we're up. Three to two here. And not easy to do in today's game. High velocity, exploding breaking yeah. stuff. This is a situation where no, I, you know, I don't think a bunt would quite do the job. Slider down, ump, ump's unpredictability working against me in this case. Slider down, 2-1. Cisco, the runner at third, Velasquez on second, Sanchez at first, one Fastball up, 3-1 now, Montero's getting himself into some trouble here. Well, when the pressure starts to intensify, it often feels like the strike zone gets harder and harder to hit. And that is going to be the double play they need to get him out of it. Darn. Well, J.J. Harrell coming back up with his Flamingo stance. Phillies are back on top. Let's see if we can hold it that way. 
This thing's far from over, even though we're fastball taking strike one and 97. By one, all they need to do is get this leadoff guy, and they're an extra base hit away from tying this thing up. Into the wind AJ Minter warming in the pen for the Mets, former Brave. Chops that foul. Jason at 90 pitches, so not exactly his most efficient outing. Ready to deliver the one and two. Cutter fouled off. Stays alive, one two. The one two. Swung on and missed. Give that man a hat. That's three strikeouts on the day for him. Ten strikeouts on the day for Jason. First out of the inning. Strikeout number 201 for him today. Or this season, I should say. In now, Emil Escobar. Now a hit in two tries so far. First delivery to him on the way. Fouls off the fastball down. Strike one. We'll give him a cutter up and away now. Swung on and missed. He's set up for another strike out here. The count to 0 and 2. He's still looking great to me out there on the mound. Punched out the first guy in the seventh, and he's jumped All right, fastball up and in. Swung on and missed. That strikeout number 11 on the day, and that is the third out, or the second, uh, second strikeout of the day for Escobar. 11 strikeouts on the day for Jason, second out of the inning. And we, they got Bradley Zimmer coming up to try to make some amends for what's going on today. Try to change up down. Floated that one in there. That was a bad one for him to throw. Good one for him to hit. And that's uh, an 0 1 pitch by the grace of God only. Here comes the 0 1. This is swung on and lifted down the field line, but it'll get back into the crowd as he jumps ahead of him now. 0 and 2. Give him a. Uh, High heater, no bite, and that is going to be a one-two pitch. But there's your textbook waste pitch right there. Try and get the eye level up. Let's see if he comes back with another fastball elevated or drops a hammer off. We're going to go outside with this one. Two balls and two strikes. Little bit far outside there, Jay. Well, on two-two and pitch number one hundred, I don't want to mess around too much. We'll go change up low and away. And swing and a miss. Bradley Zimmer can't do anything. Struck out the side. That'll end the inning. So we'll see if they continue to put Jason out there into the eighth. I got to think that his day is getting close to done, though. And in fact, they're going to bring on Sam Tuivalala to uh, set up the eighth and hopefully hold him down into the ninth. So we'll see. If the Phillies can make this one-run lead, hold up. Survey says. All right. Well, Jason had to work a little for it, but it all came out worth it in the end. Jason pitched for seven innings today, allowed two runs on five hits, collected 12 strikeouts, and got himself a well-deserved win. He goes to 15-3 and three on the year, and he goes to 115-48 and 48 in his career. His ERA is at 1.62, his FIP is at 2.73, and his XFIP is at 3.43. So that's going to do it for me. Until next time. I'm Tyrant Saber, and I will see you at the ballpark.